This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 Unported License available under http slash slash Creative Commons Org License BYSA 3.0 Neuschwanstein Castle Neuschwanstein German Schloss Neuschwanstein English New Swanstein Castle is a 19th century Romanesque revival palace on a rugged hill above the village of Hohenschwangau near Füssen in southwest Bavaria, Germany. The palace was commissioned by Ludwig II of Bavaria as a retreat and as a homage to Richard Wagner. Ludwig paid for the palace out of his personal fortune and by means of extensive borrowing rather than Bavarian public funds. The palace was intended as a personal refuge for the reclusive king, but it was opened to the paying public immediately after his death in 1886. Since then, more than 61 million people have visited Neuschwanstein Castle. More than 1.3 million people visit annually with as may as 6,000 per day in the summer. The palace has appeared prominently in several movies and was the inspiration for Disneyland's Sleeping Beauty Castle and later similar structures. Location The municipality of Schwangau lies at an elevation of 800 meter, that's about 2,620 feet, at the southwest border of the German state of Bavaria. Its surroundings are characterized by the transition between Alpine foothills in the south toward the nearby Austrian border and a hilly landscape in the north that appears flat by comparison. In the Middle Ages, three castles overlooked the villages. One was called Schwanstein Castle. In 1832, Ludwig's father, King Maximilian II of Bavaria, bought its ruins to replace them with the comfortable Neo-Gothic palace known as Hohenschwangau Castle. Finished in 1837, the palace became his family's summer residence and his elder son Ludwig, born on 1845, spent a large part of his childhood there. Vor der Hohenschwangau Castle and hinter Hohenschwangau Castle Set on a rugged hill overlooking Schwanstein Castle to nearby lakes, Alpsee and Schwansee, and the village, separated only by a moat, they jointly consisted of a hall, a keep, and a fortified tower house. In the 19th century, only ruins remained of the twin medieval castles, but those of Hohenschwangau served as a lookout place known as Sulfenturm. The ruins above the family's palace were known to the crown prince from his excursions. He first sketched one of them in his diary in 1959. When the young king came to power in 
1864 the construction of a new palace in place of the two ruined castles became the first in his series of palace building projects. Ludwig calls the new palace New Hohenschwangau Castle only after his death was it renamed Neuschwanstein. The confusing result is that Hohenschwangau and Schwanstein have effectively swept names. Hohenschwangau Castle replaced by the ruins of Schwanstein Castle and Neuschwanstein Castle replaced the ruins of the two Hohenschwangau castles. Design and concept. Neuschwanstein embodies both the contemporaneous architectural fashion known as Castle Romanticism, German Burgromantik, and Ludwig II's immoderate enthusiasm for the operas of Richard Wagner, Richard Wagner. In the 19th century, Many castles were constructed or reconstructed, often with significant changes to make them more picturesque. Palace building projects, similar to Neuschwanstein, had been undertaken earlier in several of the German states and included Hohenschwangau Castle, Liechtenstein Castle, Hohenzollern Castle, and numerous buildings on the River Rhine, such as Stolzenfels Castle. The inspiration for the construction of Neuschwanstein came from two journeys in 1867, one in May to the reconstructed Wartburg near Eisenach, another in July to the Chateau de Pierrefort which Eugène Villot-le-Duc was transforming from a ruined castle into a historic palace. The king saw both buildings as representatives of a romantic interpretation of the Middle Ages as well as the musical mythology of his friend Richard Wagner. Wagner's operas Tannhäuser and Lohengrin had made a lasting impression on him. In February 1868, Ludwig's grandfather Ludwig I died, freeing the considerable sums that were previously spent on the abdicted king's appanage. This allowed Ludwig II to start the architectural project of building a private refuge in the familiar landscape far from the capital Munich so that he could live out his idea of the Middle Ages. The building design was drafted by the stage designer Christian Jank and realized by the architect Eduard Riedel. For technical reasons, the ruined castles could not be integrated into the plan. Initial ideas for the palace drew stylistically on Nuremberg Castle envisaged a simple building in place of the old Vorderhohenschwangau castle, but they were rejected and replaced by increasingly extensive drafts, culminating in a bigger palace modified on the Wartburg. The king insisted on a detailed plan and on personal approval of each and every draft. Ludwig's control went so far that the palace has been regarded as his own creation rather than that of the architects 
involved. Whereas contemporary architecture crisis derived Neuschwanstein, one of the last big palace building projects in the 19th century, as Kitsch, Neuschwanstein and Ludwig II's other buildings are now counted among the major works of European historicism. For financial reasons, a project similar to Neuschwanstein, Falkenstein Castle, never left the planning stages. The palace can be regarded as typically for 19th century architecture. The shapes of Romanesque, simple geometric figures such as cuboids and semicircular arches, Gothic upwarped pointing lines, slim towers, delicate embellishments and Byzantine architecture and art the throne hall decor were mingled in an electric fashion and supplemented with 19th century technical achievements. The Patrona Bavaria and St. George on the curved face of the palace main building are depicted in the local Lüftelmalerei style, a fresco technique typical for Algoy's farmer's houses, while the unimplemented drafts for the King's House Gallery foreshadow elements of Art Nouveau. Characteristic of Neuschwanstein's design are theater themes. Christian Young drew on Collis drafts from his time as a scenic painter. The basic style was originally planned to be neo-Gothic, but the palace was primarily built in Romanistic style in the end. The operatic themes moved gradually from Tannhäuser and Lohengrin to Parseval. Construction in 1868, the ruins of the medieval twin castles were completely demolished. The remains of the old keep were blown up. The foundation stone for the palace was laid on September the 5th on 1869 in 18. 72. Its cellar was completed and in 1876 everything up the first floor, the guardhouse being finished first. At the end of 1882 it was completed and fully furnished, allowing Ludwig to take provisional lodging there and observe the ongoing construction work. In 1874, management of the civil works passed from Eduard Riedel to Georg von Dollmann. The topping out ceremony for the palace was in 1880 and in 1884 the king was able to move into the new building. In the same year, the direction of the project passed to Julius Hoffmann after Dolman had fallen from the king's favor. The palace was erected as conventional brick construction and later encased in various types of rock. The right limestone used for the fronts came from a nearby quarry. The sandstone bricks for the portal and bay windows came from Schleitdorf in Württemberg. Mabel from Untersberg near Salzburg was used for the window. 
the arch ribs, the columns and the capitals. The throne hall was a later addition to the plans and required a steel framework. The transport of building materials were facilitated by scaffolding and a steam crane that lifted the material to the construction site. Another crane was used at the construction site. The recently founded Dampfkessel Revisionsverein Steerboiler Inspection Association regularly inspected both boilers. For about two decades the construction site was the principal employer in the region. In 1880 about 200 craftsmen were occupied at the site not counting suppliers and other persons indirectly involved in the construction. At times when the king insisted on particularly close deadlines and urgent changes, reportedly up to 300 workers per day were active, sometimes working at night by the light of oil lamps. Statistics from the year 1979-1980 support an immense amount of building materials. 465 tons, 513 short tons of Salzburg Mabel, 1550, that's about 1750. 10 short tons of sandstone, 400,000 bricks and 2,050 cubic meters, that's about 2,680 yards of wood for the scaffolding. In 1970, a society was founded for insuring the workers for a low monthly fee, argumented by the king. The hire of construction casualties, 30 cases are mentioned in the statistic, received a small pension. In 1884, the king was able to move into the still unfinished palace. And in 1885, he invited his mother Marie to Neuschwanstein on the occasion of her 16th birthday. For 1886, the external structure of the palace, the hall, was mostly finished. In the same year, Ludwig had the first wooden Marienbrücke over the Pollard Gorge replaced by a steel construction. Despite its size, Neuschwanstein did not have space for the royal court, but contained only the king's private lodging and servants' rooms. The curt buildings served decorative rather than residential purposes. The palace was intended to serve Ludwig II as a kind of inhabitable theatrical setting. As a temple of friendship, it was also dedicated to the life and work of Richard Wagner, who died in 1883 before he had set foot on the building. In the end, Ludwig II only lived in the palace for a total of 172 days. Architecture The effect of the Neuschwanstein ensemble is highly stylistic, both externally and internally. The king's influence is apparent throughout 
and he took a keen personal interest on the design and decoration. An example can be seen in his comments or commands regarding a mural depicting Lewin Green in the palace. His Majesty wishes that the ship be placed further from the shore, that Lohen Green's neck be less titled, that the chain from the ship to the swan be of gold and not of roses, and finally that the style of the castle shall be kept medieval. The suite of rooms within the palace contains the throne room, Ludwig's suite, the singer's hall and the grotto. Throughout the design pays homage to the German legends of Lohengrin, the Swan Knight. Hohenschwangau, where Ludwig spent much of his youth, had decorations of these sagas. These themes were taken up in the operas of Richard Wagner. Many rooms bear a border depicting the various operas written by Wagner, including a theater permanently featuring the set of one such play. Many of the interior rooms remain undecorated with only 14 rooms finished before Ludwig's death. With the palace under construction at the king's death, one of the major features of the palace remained unbuilt. A massive keep which would have formed the highest point and central focus of the ensemble was planned for the middle of the upper courtyard but was never built at the decision of the king's family. The foundation for the keep is visible in upper courtyard. Neuschwanstein Castle contains of several individual structures which were erected over a length of 150 meters on the top of the cliff ridge. The elongate building is furnished with numerous towers, ornaments, turrets, gables, balconies, pinnacles and sculptures. Following Romanesque style, most window openings are fashioned as B and Triforia. Before the back drop of the Tegelberg and the Pöllert Gorge in the south and the Alpine foothills that their lakes in the north, the ensemble of individual buildings provides varying picturesque views of the palace from all directions. It was designed as a romantic ideal of a knight's castle, unlike real castles whose building stock is in most castles the result of centuries of building activity, Neuschwanstein was planned from the inspection as an intentionally asymmetric building and erected in consecutive stages. Typically attributes of a castle were included but real fortifications, the most important feature of a medieval aristocratic estate were dispensed with. Exterior. The palace complex is entered through a symmetrical gatehouse flanked by two stair towers. The eastward pointing gate 
building is the only structure of the palace whose wall area is fashioned in high contrast colors. The exterior walls are cased with red bricks, the curved fronts with yellow limestone. The roof chronicle is surrounded by pinnacles. The upper floor of the gatehouse is surrounded by a crow-stepped gable and held Ludwig II's first lodging at Neuschwanstein, from which he occasionally observed the building work before the hall was completed. The ground floors of the gatehouse were intended to accommodate the stables. The passage through the gatehouse, crowned with the Royal Bavarian Court of Arms, leads directly into the courtyard. Courtyard has two levels, the lower one being defined to the east by the gatehouse and to the north by the foundations of the so-called rectangular tower and by the gallery building. The southern end of the courtyard is open, imparting a view of the surrounding mountain scenery. At its western end the courtyard is delimited by a bricked embankment, whose polygonally protracting black marks the core of the originally protected chapel. This three nave church never built was intended to form the base of a 90 meter 295 feet keep the plant centerpiece of the architectural ensemble. A fight of steps at the side gives access to the upper level. Today the foundation plan of the chapel keep is marked out in the upper courtyard pavement. The most striking structure of the upper court level is the so-called rectangular tower, 45 meters or 148 feet. Like most of the court buildings, it mostly serves a decorative purpose as part of the ensemble. Its viewing platform provides a fast view over the Alpine foothills to the north. The northern end of the upper courtyard is defined by the so-called Knight's House. The three-story buildings connected to the rectangular tower and the gatehouse by means of a continuous gallery fashioned with a blind arcade. From the point of view of castle romanticism, the knight's house was the abode of a stronghold manfolk. At Neuschwanstein estate and service rooms were envisioned here. The bower which completes the knight's house at the lady's house but was never used as such defines the south side of the courtyard. Both structures together from the motif of the Antwerp castle featuring in the first act of Lohengrin embedded in the pavement is the floor plan of the Plant Palace Chapel. The western end of the courtyard is delimited by the palace, the hall. It constitutes the real main 
and residential building of the castle and contains the king's state room and the servants rooms. The palace is a cloacal five-story structure in the shape of two huge cubits that are connected in a flat angle and covered by two adjacent high gable roofs. The building's shape follows the curse of the rich. In its angles there are two stair towers, the northern one surmounting the palace roof by several stories with its height of 65 meters that's 213 feet with their polymorphic roofs both towers are reminiscent to the Chateau de Pierrefonds the western palace front supports a two-story balcony with view on the Alpsee while northwards a low chair tower and the conversatory protect from the main structure. The entire palace is spangled with numerous decorative chimneys and ornamental turrets. The curt front with colorful frescoes. The curt side gable is covered with a copper lion, the western outward gable with a likeness of a knight. Interior. Had it been completed, the palace would have had more than 200 interior rooms, including premises for guests and servants, as well as for service and logistics. Ultimately, no more that about 15 rooms and halls were finished. In its lower stories, the palace accommodates administrative and servants' room and the rooms of today's palace administration. The king's state rooms are situated in the upper stories. The anterior structure accommodates the lodgings in the third floor, above them the hall of the singers. The upper floors of the west-facing posterior structure are filled almost completely by the throne hall. The total floor space of all floors amounts to nearly 6,000 square meters. That's about 65,000 square feet. Neuschwanstein houses numerous significant interior rooms of German historism. The palace was fitted with several of the latest technical inventions of the late 19th century. Among other things, it had a battery-powered bell system for the servants and telephone lines, the kitchen equipment included a Rumford oven that turned the skewer with its heat and so automatically adjusted the turning speed. The hot air was used for a calorie-free central heating system. Further novelties for the area were running warm water and toilets with an automatic flashing. The largest room of the palace by area is the Hall of the Singers, followed by the ho Throne Hall. The 27 by 
10 meter 89 by 33 feet hall of the singers is located in the eastern curved side wing of the palace in the fourth floor above the king's lodgings it's designed as an amalgamation of two rooms of the Wartburg, the hall of the singers and the ballroom it was one of the king's favorite projects for his palace the rectangular room was decorated with themes from Lohengrin and Parseval. Its longer side is terminated by a stage that is structured by arcades and known as the Sängerlaube. The Hall of the Singers was never designed for court festivals of the reclusive king. Rather like the throne hall, it served as a wakeable monument in which the culture of knights and courtly love of the Middle Ages was represented. The first performance in this hall took place in 1933, a concert commemorating the 50th anniversary of Richard Wagner's death. The throne hall, 20 by 10 meters, 66 by 39 feet, is situated in the west wing of the palace. With its high of 30 meters, 43 feet, it occupies the third and fourth that was intended to hold Ludwig's throne, which was never completed. The throne dais is surrounded by paintings of Jesus, the twelve apostles and six canonized kings. The mutual paintings were created by Wilhelm Hauschild. The floor mosaic was completed after the king's death. The chandelier is fashioned after a Byzantinic crown. The throne hall makes a sacral impression. Following the king's wish, it amalgamated the grain hall from Parseval with a symbol of the divine right of kings, an incorporation of unrestricted sovereign power which Ludwig as the heart of a constitutional monarchy no longer held. The union of the sacral and regal is emphasized by the portraits in the abuse of six canonized kings. St. Louis of France St. Stephen of Hungary, St. Edward the Confessor of England, St. Wences Klaus of Bohemia, St. Olaf of Norway, and St. Henry, Holy Roman Emperor. Apart from the large ceremonial rooms, several smaller rooms were created for the use by Ludwig II. The royal lodging is on the third floor of the palace in the east wing of the palace. It consists of eight rooms with living space and several smaller rooms. In spite of the Gaudi decor, the living space with its moderate room size and its sofas and suites makes a relatively modern impression on today's visitors. Ludwig II did not attach importance to representative requirements of former times in which the life of a monarch was mostly public. The interior decoration with 
mural paintings, tapestry, furniture and other handicraft generally prefers to the king's favorite themes. The Graal legend, the works of Wolfram from Eschenbach and their interpretation by Richard Wagner. The eastern drawing room is abandoned with themes from the low and green legend, the furniture, sofa, table, armchairs and seats in a northward alcove is comfortable and homelike. Next to the drawing room is a little artificial grotto that forms the passage to the study. The unusual room, originally equipped with an artificial waterfall and a so-called rainbow machine, is connected to a little conversatory depicting the Hörselberg Grotto. It relates to Wagner's Tannhäuser, as does the decor of the ancient study. In the park of Linderhof Palace, the king had installed a similar grotto of greater dimensions. Opposite the study follows the dining room, adored with themes of courtly love. Since the kitchen in Neuschwanstein is situated three stories below the dining room, it was impossible to install a wishing table, dining table disappearing by means of a mechanism, as at Linderhof Palace and Herrn Chiemsee. Instead, the dining room was connected with the kitchen by means of a self-lift. The bedroom adjacent to the dining room and the subsequent house chapel are the only rooms of the palace that remains in neo-gothic style. The king's bedroom is dominated by a huge bed adored with carvings. Fourteen carvers worked more than four years on the bed canopy with its numerous pinnacles and on the oaken paintings and on the oaken panellings. It was in this room that Ludwig was arrested in the night from 11th to 12th June of 1886. The adjacent little house chapel is consecrated to St. Louis, after whom the owner was named. The servants' room in the basement of the palace are quite scantily equipped with massive oak furniture. Besides one table and one Cabinet. There are two beds of 1.80 meters, 5 feet and 11 inches length each. Oakwake glass windows separated the rooms from the corridor that connects the exterior stairs with the main stairs, so that the king could enter and leave unseen. The servants were not allowed to use the main stairs, but were restricted to the much narrower and steeper servants' stairs. Funding The king's wishes and demands expand during the construction of Neuschwanstein, and so did the expenses. Drafts and estimated costs were revised 
repeatedly. Initially, a modest study was planned instead of the great throne hall and projected guest rooms were struck from the drafts to make palace for a Moorish hall which could not be realized due to lack of resources. Completion was originally projected for 1972 but deferred repeatedly. Neuschwanstein, the symbolic medieval knight's castle, was not Ludwig II's only huge construction project. It was followed by the Rococo-style Lustschloss of Linderhof Palace and the Baroque Palace of Herrn Chiemsee, a monument to the ear of absolutism. Linderhof, the smallest of the project, was finished in 1886 and the other two remain incomplete. All these projects together drained his resources. The king paid for his construction projects by private means and from his civil list income. Contrary to frequent claims, the Bavarian treasury was not directly burdened by his buildings. From 1871 Ludwig had an additional secret income in return for a political favor given to Otto von Bismarck. The construction costs of Neuschwanstein in the king's lifetime amounted to 6.2 million marks, almost twice the initial cost estimate of 3.2 million marks. As his private means were insufficient for the increasingly escalating construction project. The king continuously opened new lines of credit. In 1876 a Kurt concealer was replaced after pointing out the danger of insolvency. By 1883 he already owned 7 million marks and in spring 1884 and August 1885 debt conventions of 7.5 million marks and 6.5 million marks respectively became necessary. Even after his debts had reached 14 million marks, Ludwig insisted on construction of his architectural project. He threatened suicide if his creditors seized his palaces. In early in 1886 Ludwig asked the cabinet for a credit of 6 million marks, which was denied. In April he followed Bismarck's advice to apply for the money to his parliament. In June the Bavarian government decided to dispose the king, who was living at Neuschwanstein, at the time. On June 9 he was incapacitated and on June 10 he had the Deposition Commission arrested in the gatehouse. In expectation of the commission he altered the gendarmerie and fire brigades of surrounding palaces for his protection. A second commission headed by Bernhard von Gutten arrived on the next day and the king was forced to leave the palace that night. Ludwig was put under the supervision of von Gutten. On June the 13th both died under mysterious circumstances in the shallow shore water of Lake Starnberg near Berg Castle. 
after Ludwig's death. At the time of Ludwig's death, the palace was far from complete. The external structure of the gatehouse and the pales were mostly finished, but the rectangular tower was still scaffolded. Work on the bower had not started, but was completed. In simplified from by 1892, without the planned female saint figures. The knight's house was also simplified. In Ludwig's plans, the columns in the knight's house gallery were held as three trucks and the capitals as the corresponding crowns. Only the foundations existed for the core piece of the palace complex. A keep of 90 meters, 300 feet height, planned in the upper courtyard, resting on a three-nave chapel. This was not realized, and the connection wing between the gatehouse and the bower saw the same fate. Plans for the castle garden with terraces and fountain west of the palace were also abandoned after the king's death. The interior of the royal living space in the palace was mostly completed in 1996. The lobbies and corridors were painted in a simpler style by 1888. The Moorish Hall, desired by the king and planned below the throne hall, was not realized any more then the so-called knight's bath, which modeled after the knight's bath in the Wartburg, was intended to render homage to the king's cult as a medieval baptism bath. A bride chamber in the bower, after a location in Lohengrin, guest rooms in the first and second floor of the palace and a great banquet hall were further abandoned projects. In fact, a complete development of Neuschwanstein had never ever been planned and at the time of the king's death there was not a youth Utilization concept for numerous rooms. When Ludwig II died in 1886, Neuschwanstein was still incomplete. The king never intended to make the palace accessible to the public. No more than six weeks after the king's death, however, the regent Luitpold ordered the palace opened to paying visitors. The administrators of Ludwig's estate managed to balance the construction debts by 1899. From then until World War I, Neuschwanstein was a stable and lucrative source of revenue for the House of Wittelsbach. Indeed, Ludwig's castles were probably the single largest income source earning by the Bavarian royal family in the last years prior to 1914. To guarantee a smooth course of visits, some rooms and the court buildings were finished first. Initially, the visitors were allowed to move freely in the palace, causing the furniture 
to rear quickly. When Bavaria became a republic in 1918, the government socialized the civil list. The resulting dispute with the House of Wittelsbach led to a split in 1923. Ludwig's palaces, including Neuschwanstein, fell to the state and were now managed by the, by the Bavarian Palace Department, a division of the Bavarian Finance Ministry. Nearby Hohenschwangau Castle fell to the Wittelsbacher Ausgleichsfonds, whose revenues go to the House of Wittelsbach. The visitor numbers continued to rise, reaching 200,000 in 1939. Due to its selected location, the palace survived the two world wars without destruction. Under the Reichsleiter Rosenberg Institute for the Occupied Territories, Einsatzstab Reichsleiter Rosenberg für die besetzten Gebiete, a sub-organization of the Nazi Party, it served until 1944 as a depot for Nazi plunder from France. The works of art were catalogued photographically. After World War II, 39 photo albums were found in the palace documenting the, dimen the dimension of robbery. The albums are now stored in the United States National Archives. At the end of the war, the German Reichsbank deposited gold in the palace, which in the last days of the war was taken to an unknown place. In April 1940. The SS considered blowing up the palace to prevent the building itself and the artwork it contained from falling to the enemy. The plan was not realized. The SS Gruppenführer, who had been assigned the task, however, and at the end of the war, the palace was surrendered undamaged to representatives of the Allied forces. Thereafter, the Bavarian archivists used some of the rooms as a provisional store for salvaged archivalia as the premises in Munich had been bombed. Neuschwanstein is a global symbol of the area of Romanticism. The palace served as a model for the Sleeping Beauty Castle of Disneyland and became a location for films such as Helmut Keutner's Ludwig II, 1955, Lucio Visconti's Ludwig, 1972, and Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, 1968. In 1977, Neuschwanstein Castle became the motive of a West German definitive stamp, and it appeared on a 2 euro commemorate coin for the German Bundesländer series in 2012. In 2007 it was a finalist in the widely published online selection 
of the new seven wonders of the world. The palace is not on the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. In 2009, a plan was discussed to make it a transnational candidate jointly with Ludwig's Linderhof and Herrn Kimsey palaces and two similar places in Romania. Pelis Castle and Pelisor Castle. Today, with 1.3 million visitors per year, Neuschwanstein is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Europe. For security reasons, the palace can only be visited during a 35-minute guided tour. There are also special guided tours that focus on specific topics. In the peak season from June until August, Neuschwanstein has as many as 6,000 visitors per day and guests without advance reservation, may have to wait several hours. Ticket sales are proceeded exclusively via the ticket center in Hohenschwanger. As of 28, the total number of visitors was more than 60 million. In 24, the revenues were booked as 6.5 million euros. A meteorite that reached Earth spectacularly on April 2002, as the Austrian border near Hohenschwanger was no named Neuschwanstein after the palace. Three fragments were found. Neuschwanstein 1, 1.75 kilo, that are 3.9 LB found July 2002 and Neuschwanstein 2 1.63 kilograms found May 2003 on the German side and Neuschwanstein 3 2.84 kilogram found June 2003 on the Austrian side near Reute. The meteorite is classified as an unstated contrat with unusually large proportions of pure iron. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Like 3.0 unported license 3.0.